a couple scriptures. This is what I was talking about. Six minutes. All right. Genesis 33, verse 33, verse 5. It says this. It's on Esau and Jacob. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. And when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and children, he said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servants. See, what they won't tell you, you know what the, what the camps won't tell you? They won't tell you that Esau and Jacob got cool. They'll say Esau, you know, he always been saying, God hates Esau. They'll tell you, they'll take you to Albadiah and all that type of stuff. But the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, no. Jacob and Esau became cool. Israel and Esau became cool. That reconciliation was there. So, all right, here we go again. First off, I want to say all praise to the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raha Kudash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right, so I wanted to land back off the beloved uh, Elder Manatazakba's uh, video here, as you can See, it's entitled Genesis 33, verses 3 through 5, does not acquit Esau from judgment. And he's absolutely 100% unequivocally right. Okay? See, these Christians try to undo what's already been done, what's already been established even before the foundation of the earth. This whole story, this whole movie, if you will, was already produced, all right, directed, and completed before the earth was even formed okay this is how deep and profound and, and powerful the heavenly father Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is but then you have these idiots these Christians that come along they don't like the narrative of the Bible because this is not our narrative we're just preaching and teaching from the scriptures you, you heard him reference the camps the camps say the camps say no the Bible says you asshole the Bible says it we're not making this up Okay, they act like we are literally creating scriptures, all right, into, from thin air and, and putting it in the Bible or putting it in our doctrine and teaching this stuff. Okay, this is what they think or you would think just based on all the rhetoric that comes with their narrative. Okay, Esau is not going to be acquitted. In fact, Esau is symbolic of the wicked. All right, now he said falsely that Esau and Israel or the Israelites reconcile and that's not they they reconciled for that moment because Esau said he was going to kill Jacob right so what would you do if you had to look over your shoulder even if it was your blood brother what would you do if your brother threatened to kill you and he meant it right what would you do wouldn't you try to use some type of subtility to uh, prolong your life, to keep your brother from, from killing you? If you had to kiss his ass? Yeah. You know, the, anybody with uh, any amount of common sense would. Okay, he used wisdom and subtility to prolong his life because he knew his brother was going to kill him. Let's get that. The book of Genesis. Chapter 27 right here verse 40 and by the sword uh, let's read let's start at 38 and Esau said unto his father hast thou but one blessing my father bless me even me also O my father and Esau lifted up his voice and wept and Isaac his father answered and said unto him behold thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above and by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion rule rulership that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck okay let's stop right there so Isaac 
is given his son Esau his blessing. The blessing doesn't stop after Esau and Jacob reconciles. No, this is talking about a legacy. Long after Esau and uh, Jacob, or the Israelites, or Jacob rather, is dead and gone, guess what? This prophecy is going to play out. Because why? Because the Heavenly Father decided that the descendants of Esau are going to be the wicked. All right, They're going to be the sword of the Heavenly Father to punish the Israelites and subsequent generations. Okay, So this is essentially the beginning of the story, not the end of the story. They don't, the, the story doesn't end. Everything, the, the scriptures aren't nullified, made void and invalidated you know, after they reconcile. No, it's just beginning. Okay, let's finish. And these words of Esau, Salakia, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. So he had it in his heart that he was going to kill Jacob. Okay, because he stole his blessing in his mind. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. He is going to kill you, Jacob. So you got to do what you got to do to prolong your life. Save yourself. That's the crux of the story. Okay? His brother was going to kill him, and he wanted to save himself. 10, 20, 30, 40 years after that. Okay? Now, these are just random times, and I'm just um, trying to drive home the point that, you know, this isn't going to stop, and this is going to be on Jacob's mind for a very, very long time until they, they meet again. And when they met, you know, with that foolish Christian just read in Genesis 33, they had met after this incident, and Jacob, you know, knowing that his brother was going to kill him, just use a little wisdom. It's that simple. Okay? Now, let's start off with, uh, or continue with Malachi. Because, again, Christians try to undo prophecy. They try to undo what's already been established. Okay? And all you have to do is look at these other uh, precepts and scriptures, and it'll tell you, well, what they're saying doesn't add up. How are they going to reconcile? But the Heavenly Father is also going to have a scripture like this. Okay? Because if they reconciled, he wouldn't have to put scriptures in the, in, the, in the Bible like this, such as this. Whereas Edom said, and this is Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them, and this is the point, the border of wickedness. And the people, the people, the people against whom the Lord hath indignation for how long? Forever. Now, this is not talking about Esau himself. This is talking about his descendants. Okay? The people, okay, which are descendants of Esau. He's the progenitor of the Edomites. He's the father of the Edomites. Okay? It's that simple. All right? Now, the Heavenly Father is not going to put this in the scriptures and undo it, right? Because Esau and Jacob reconciled at one time. No, this is telling a story, right? Now, let's go to an end time prophecy, okay? And most of these are end time prophecies that haven't been fulfilled yet. So, if they haven't been fulfilled and they're included in the Bible, they have to be fulfilled because Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Christ, says all things must be fulfilled. He didn't say maybe. He didn't say probably. He didn't say possibly. He says they must be fulfilled. Otherwise, the Heavenly Father would be a liar, right? He says everything, he says the words that come out of my mouth, go forth out of my mouth, shall not come back void. And I'm roughly paraphrasing Isaiah chapter 55, right? So everything has to come to fruition. It has to be fulfilled. All right. And it's sad that we have to have we have to keep rehashing this out because these Christians are using witchcraft and deception and deceit to tell you another narrative of the Bible. 
This is just absolutely insane, man, that these people have the nerve to get up on stage, you know, on a, a public platform and, and tell, just spew lies, man, Le left and right. All right, let's go to the book of, um, let's go to Obadiah, because this is an end time prophecy that has not been fulfilled. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph, a flame. And this is talking about the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, the Israelites. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord hath spoken it. Okay, the camps didn't speak this, did we? No, we didn't speak this. The Lord spoke it. The Lord says there should not be any remaining of the house of Esau. And guess what? This is referring to the time after Esau and the nations undergo their slavery. They have to be punished for putting the Israelites in slavery, starting with the, East, uh, the Edomites. Okay? So where is this dude talking about? Uh, what is he talking about? Is this not supposed to, to, to take place? Because he mentioned, specifically, he mentioned Obadiah. So is this not supposed to take place because Esau and Jacob reconciled? No. Is this talking about Esau himself? This is talking about his descendants because we know. Now, you know, granted, Esau could very well be reincarnated. Okay. But this is essentially talking about the nation. Okay. Of the Edomites. Okay. Let's read that again. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle, and this, is, this just means that they're going to be burnt. They're going to be incinerated off the face of this earth as a nation of people. That didn't happen yet because the Edomites are still around. In fact, they're still ruling the world. And that's consistent with prophecy. So what the hell is this dude, Desmond, whatever his last name is, what is he talking about? And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. It's not looking good for you, Desmond. What's your last name? Desmond Graham. This dude is a liar. He's a false prophet, okay, and he's affiliated with Vocab Malone. So that should tell you everything that you need to know about their lack of integrity, because they don't... They don't teach and preach from the Bible. What they do is they cherry pick scriptures to, to uh, coincide with their narrative. Okay, they take things out of context because that's what this clown is doing. He's taking it out of context. All right. He would have you believe that they did reconcile and the, the story is, is, is over. Okay, there's no more prophecy uh, containing Esau, Edom and the Edomites. Okay. After this reconciliation, the Edomites will not rule the world, okay? And we know prophecy says otherwise, okay? They've done all manners of wickedness over time, and it's consistent with that label, that title that the Heavenly Father bestowed upon them, the border of wickedness, okay? Because this is what they were created to do, and we're going to get more scriptures to prove that, all right? All right, so we went to the book of Obadiah. All right. Hopefully this shut this clown up. And if anybody at this point still believes in Christianity, you are a damn fool and you are putting a nail in your coffin. If you believe this madness that these people are spewing, they just they're just literally speaking lies and trying to deceive the masses in an uh, attempt, a futile attempt to save the Edomites, the so-called white man. OK, this is this is. This is blasphemy against the Heavenly Father, okay? Because His Word is the final word, okay? Yahweh Shai and the Heavenly Father are one in terms of mindset, okay? Yahweh Shai is not going to teach a gospel that contradicts or undermines what the Heavenly Father already, already wrote. I mean, man. All right, let's go on to the book of. Uh, Psalms chapter 17 verse 13 because again this is still telling a story about the Edomites and how they're the wicked now we read the book of Malachi it said they're the border of wickedness well Psalms 
substantiates that. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Now, who's the wicked? We read that in the book of Malachi, the border of wickedness, the people against whom the heavenly father has indignation forever. That's these people, right? Which is thy sword. And this is symbolic of, we obviously know that the Edomites aren't literally a sword, right? No, this is referring to what they are, their purpose. And their purpose is to punish and destroy the Israelites for sinning against the Heavenly Father for breaking the first covenant. Okay, let's read that again. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him. Disappoint who? The Edomites, the descendants of Esau. Cast him down. From what? His rulership, okay? Because during the end times, he is going to be ruling the world. So cast him down from his rulership. Deliver my soul from the wicked, the Edomites, which is thy sword, an instrument of punishment, okay, against the Israelites. All right? It's that simple, okay? What do you have to say about that, Mr. Desmond Graham, you liar? The Lord says he wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. That's not truth, what he's speaking. He's speaking lies. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 25, verse 14. What do you have to say about this, uh, Pastor uh, Desmond Graham, or whatever your name is? And I will lay my vengeance upon who? Edom. This is an unfulfilled prophecy. By the hand of my people, who? Israel, the Israelites. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. Now, if the Heavenly Father had forgiven them, why is he talking about vengeance? He didn't forgive the Edomites. Okay, they weren't made to be forgiven. They were actually vessels of destruction. Okay, they are to destroy the Israelites. All right, not all of us because a remnant would be saved. Right? But the Heavenly Father, because of it, he's still going to have to exact judgment and recompense against the Edomite, uh, the Edomites. Right? So he's going to take vengeance against them. All right? And he's going to do it by the hand of the Israelites. When we get those super bodies, right? When we get the, the law, statutes, and commandments placed in our inward parts with those new bodies, <clears throat> then the Heavenly Father is going to take vengeance on the Edomites and it's going to start with a thousand years of slavery <clears throat> okay that whole time we are going to be in full perfection as Israelites okay we're going to have angelic powers Lord's wills I'm one of them okay but we are going to have angelic power okay so when it's time to put them in punishment or captivity slavery all right we'll be able to do that with all kinds of power, superpower, right? The scripture says we shall be as God, okay? So, oh, it's going to suck to be Edomites, boy. During that time, we'll be able to read their minds. We'll be able to know what they're going to do before they even do it, okay? This is going to be a miserable, miserable, miserable captivity, okay? You thought our captivity was bad. You wait until this one. You just wait until this one. They have no idea what's coming for them. And here it is. You got these Christian apologists, especially these Israelites, who are still uh, stuck in Christianity. Okay? They like being under the foot of Esau, the Edomites. Okay? They love being captives. We're still captives. <clears throat> All right? We're still slaves, pretty much. Slaves to the system. Slaves to Esau, Edom's rule. Okay? We don't have any freedom. We don't have any sovereignty here. Okay? But he's perfectly content and happy with it. Okay? And this is, uh, this is pitiful, man. This is pitiful. Because the Heavenly Father is promising us something that the world's never seen before. We shall be like gods. Right? Or God. Okay? We're going to have superpowers. We're going to have eternal, everlasting life. And this jackass is perfectly content with being under the foot and under the thumb of the wicked, okay? Base people, right? Go figure. That's all right. It's okay, because you're going to see 
the Heavenly Father is uh, he's gonna he's gonna open your eyes to see the truth when it's too late all right let's go to the book of uh, let's see second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9 okay for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth all right so if they reconcile why is this talking about Esau being the end of the world is this literally talking about Esau well no this is symbolic of his people okay this is representative of the whole nation of the Edomites okay which it's prophesied that they would be ruling the world when the Savior comes right and that's what this essentially says okay they're gonna be in rulership right and when the Lord comes back he's gonna establish the kingdom of heaven okay so the Israelites will be ruling after that forever and ever all right it's that simple so what the hell is Desmond talking about why is he ignoring this scripture he ignored uh, Ezekiel 25 he, he ignored Obadiah okay because he's trying to convince everybody that the Edomites can be saved he's trying to convince that the Lord no longer hates the Edomites because Esau and Jacob reconciled for that brief period okay shit was supposed to hit the fan long after Esau and Jacob reconciled okay because this is talking about his descendants all right a nation of people that the Heavenly Father would create to do evil and wickedness on this earth okay this is the man of sin the man of lawlessness the godless okay they think they are gods all right so this is consistent with the narrative of the Bible this is not consistent with the narrative of Christianity Christianity would falsely have you believe that the Lord loves everybody he no longer hates the Edomites he didn't create them to be the wicked he didn't create them to punish the Israelites so basically what this guy is saying is that we were in the slavery for naught Esau is going to get away with having punished us the way he did, not just in the, this captivity, but when we were in Rome, when we were in Greece. He's going to get away with all that. All right? He's going to get away with all that wickedness and evil he did, and he's going to be entering into the kingdom of heaven hand in hand with the Israelites. What kind of bullshit is this dude talking about? And this is what these Christians, I mean, they tell you this with a straight face. All right? They nullify all these, they try to, because you can't nullify what's already written and what's already been established, right? But they try to pick one scripture to nullify everything that we just covered, okay? So according to him, this is no longer in effect, right? So who's ruling the world? We know who's ruling the world. We can see it. You can ask the average person what nation of people rules the world, okay? And without a doubt, any and everybody, the vast majority people, will tell you that it's the Edomites. We know who rules the world, okay? Just look at the money, all right? Look at the currency of today here in Babylon the Great. That should tell you everything you need to know. Mount Rushmore. Look at Congress. Look at Senate. You got a couple sellout uh, politicians of, uh, of color in there, but all in all, we know who's calling the shots. We know who's ruling things. All right. We know who's implementing the evil and the wickedness here in Babylon the Great. Okay. The alphabet agenda, Satan worship. What nation of people is promoting that? Who's pushing that? If you had to, say, if you had to identify one nation of people, because it's obviously a nation of people that's pushing this, right? Who's making all the decisions, who's in control. So who would it be? See, people don't like to talk about it. People don't like to enter the conversation because then they have to open their eyes and tell the truth as to what they see because we know who's running this world, who's pushing this wicked, evil, abominable vibration throughout the four corners of the world. They're starting here in Babylon the Great, okay? Who's pushing the P-E-D-O-philia vibration on this earth who's trying to legalize it what nation of people so you got to ask yourself these questions man 
Okay, it doesn't make you hateful. It doesn't make you racist because you're telling it like it is according to the scriptures. Right? See, they'll shoot the messenger instead of the message. Okay? We're just telling you what's written in the scriptures. Okay? Now, if you don't like it, you got to take that up with the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay? Not that He gives a damn because you're going to be destroyed. Anyway, I didn't want to make this too long. I hope this was edifying. I just thought the, I felt the need to land back off this uh, video because I'm just sick and tired of these, these dusty Christians, man, that come along trying to negate everything that's written in the Bible. They are literally trying to rewrite the scriptures, okay, with their vain opinions, man. I mean, this is just... It's just all the more reason for the Lord to come back and destroy the wicked two-thirds because this is evil, this is wicked, they're spreading lies, and they're demonizing us as they're spreading their lies and their rhetoric. They're demonizing us. They're making us out to be this, this evil, wicked cult that's just creating lies and taking scriptures out of context when it's them that's actually doing it. They're calling us evil when we're good. Or trying to be, trying to be righteous, that is what I'm trying to say, okay? Anyway, with that, I want to say all praise to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahaha Kudash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, pushing this doctrine of truth to the elect of the nation of Israel who are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, pursuant to the curses of Deuteronomy. Until next time, Shalom.